As Nathaniel mentioned, we don't just decide which voters to contact because we think it sounds cool or we think you'll have fun. You know, as our organizing and field director, I want it to be cool and I want you to have fun. But at the end of the day, I'm only going to ask you to do things that make an impact. So now we're going to talk about postcards. So I love this question. I love that you all know EVP well enough to be asking us this type of question. You are the right volunteers and donors for us because we're ready to answer it. So at EVP, we mobilize voters in five different ways. These options on the left, phone calls, door knocking, and handwritten postcards are done by our volunteers. Many of you are on the call tonight. In addition to those three modes, we also do direct mail, that's like letters or fully printed postcards, along with digital ads sent to folks' devices. We combine these in some elections and in others we pick, you know, one or two of them. So today we're gonna be focusing on postcards. And I'm gonna speak to you about isolation experiments where we only send to volunteer postcards, along with some where we layer multiple of these methods together. So as Nathaniel mentioned, our gold standard of measuring our results is using what's called randomized controlled trials. The first step in an RCT is having our full population of low propensity environmental voters. Those are the folks that Nathaniel just told you we talk to. What he didn't mention is that in all of our voter contact, we actually set aside a small control group of voters who we don't contact. These are folks that are similar. They're also low propensity environmental voters, but we randomly select some of them to not be contacted so that after an election, we can measure the differences in these RCTs. So we have these two groups. Our treatment group gets our voter mobilization messaging. So that might be postcards, phone calls, door-to-door -door canvases, multiple of these things together. And the other group hears absolutely nothing from EVP. They have their election. And then after the election, we cross-reference public voter files to see how many people voted from our treatment group and from our control group. And that allows us to see the difference in voting turnout between our treatment, who we contacted, and our control, who we didn't. And then we measure these results at a level of what's called statistical significance. So we only report out to you the results that are uh, typically 95% confident that EVP is solely responsible for whatever impact we're reporting. That means it's at a 95% confidence interval. Some results, uh, and we'll kind of highlight that in the report, are at a 90% confidence interval. But we are very, very certain that the results we report out to you are due to EVP's contact alone. With our volunteer postcards, and those of you that have been joining us for at least 2024 and 2025 will be familiar with all three of these. Um, so that's loss aversion, trending norms, and friends and family messages. And I'll dig into what each of those means in a moment. We're starting off with loss aversion messaging. The idea behind loss aversion is that we as humans are much more likely to be afraid of losing something then we are to care about gaining something. Kind of similar to this idea of like sunk cost, you know, we really, really, really don't want to wreck something that we've already started or lose something that we already have. We're averse to that loss. So here's an example of a loss aversion postcard design. And Ren on our team actually designs all of our postcards. Here's the front and here's the back. And this is going to be consistent across all the designs that I'm going to show you. This blue and orange text is pre-printed on the postcard along with our return address. And the information in green is what our volunteers hand write on the postcards. So I'm gonna walk you through the anatomy of this loss aversion postcard. So first I'm gonna highlight the actual handwritten message. So thanks for being a good voter in 2024. Keep your good voting record by voting in the 11-4 Virginia general election. These are postcards that actually 400 plus volunteers mailed today. Um, this is a real example from this upcoming election. And you'll see on the front, we say, we kind of repeat that, thank you for voting in 2024. Now, an important caveat is these are all voters who did vote in the 2024 presidential election. I'll talk to the types of messages we use for voters who didn't, 
Um, but that part has to be true. We can't just be lying, the voters. So we thank them. Who doesn't want to be thanked? Everyone loves that. Um, but with that thank you, there's a little bit of social pressure as well, right? Because how do I know that they voted? Well, who you vote for is secret, but whether you vote is public record. That is like our gold star social pressure messaging that we use as much as we can at EVP. It's the subtle note that even though I'm a stranger, I know whether or not you voted and it's important that you vote. So this is the handwritten part uh, that makes these loss aversion postcards and the front design different from our other postcards. In addition to what's handwritten, I'll walk you through the other pieces. So we have um, an elections website as well as the voting methods printed on there again so that there's no confusion. Once we rope the voter in with this handwritten message, who doesn't love a handwritten message? Then they can look up and see all the other facts that they might need in order to actually be able to cast their vote. We have that social pressure message right at the top, our gold standard, and we have an additional election information as well, just so that there's no confusion about what the election is or when uh, voting happens. Our return address. And finally, you'll see this um, on our postcards. We also use this similar framing with our phone banks as well, where we always have folks identify themselves as volunteers. There's evidence that shows that identifying yourself as a volunteer actually makes the message a little bit more impactful because the person on the other side knows, whoa, this isn't someone getting paid to do this. This isn't some like, you know, money, whatever. Like someone is spending their time to tell you this because it's really important because they think it is important enough to volunteer their time to give you that information. So we always have folks uh, sign off as a volunteer. Now, here's the results. For these loss aversion postcards, you're looking at six different experiments where we only sent people a postcard. One volunteer postcard with the loss aversion message similar to what you just looked at. In these, three of them met that high degree of a statistically significant result. So you see we have between 1.3 and 1.5% increases in turnout of those voters who did receive a postcard compared to the similar voters who did not receive a postcard. The three bars that you see in gray all suggest that those campaigns were, were impactful as well. However, we were not able to meet that degree of statistically significant confidence that these impacts were solely due to EVP. Now that might be confusing. You see Colorado and it looks even higher than these others. Um, this has to do with the treatment group, uh, kind of how many people were in that treatment group. So you'll see for all three of these in gray, the treatment group was under 15,000 voters, which just means that results even of a similar um, like impact to the ones in green means we just can't say with confidence that it was not due to additional factors. But it's great news that all of these six standalone experiments show positive increases in turnout. And that doubles down when we look at multi-mode campaigns. So as I mentioned at the top, we have these five different voter contact methods and these four are opportunities where we layered those together. I can say specifically for Tucson, we did volunteer phone calls, postcards, and volunteer canvassing. So volunteers on this call might've been involved with all three of those. Um, and we possibly included other methods as well. But all three of these in green were statistically significant impacts that included these loss aversion postcards. So I think Tucson is a really good example of what we see in an odd year when we can layer these methods on top of each other, 2.7. We feel really, really good about those results. So loss aversion postcards, they're our gold standard. We have a lot of data that shows that they're impactful and impactful in different election contexts. However, they can only be used with people who actually did vote in a recent election. And since we're talking to low propensity voters, we don't always have people who voted in an election recently, like people we talked to in a presidential year. So that's where these other two come in, our trending norms messaging. So we first tested this message with a printed postcard. This was not a volunteer postcard. Um, we had it all done at the print shop and sent off 
to see if it worked before we asked our volunteers to do it. So trending norms is leveraging something similar to social pressure where we're saying society is moving in a certain direction here. More people are voting in Texas every year. You don't wanna be left behind. No one wants to be the last person not voting when everyone else on their block or all their friends are voting. So we're leveraging that feeling of not wanting to miss out. And then on the back, again, this is fully printed. We have similar messages to what uh, I showed you on those last postcards. So in this direct mail experiment, we saw a 0.4% increase in turnout of our treatment voters versus our control. Uh, again, that's statistically significant. So we know that these postcards have the potential to make a positive impact. That's where we then brought our volunteers in. We really wanted to use this message in 2024 because again, we're talking to people who were unlikely to vote in a presidential. I can't thank them for voting recently because they haven't. Instead, we're gonna remind them that all sorts of other folks in their state are voting and they wanna be part of that rising tide. So on here, we had, we'd written each year more Virginians vote, don't be left behind on November 5th. So again, similar repeat to that message on the front. Because it was a presidential year, we didn't really want to do too many isolation experiments because we don't want to leave any voters on the table. We want to talk to voters as many ways as we can, as many times as we can. So these are four multi-mode campaigns. So again, that had postcards as well as other types of voter contact. Um, and interestingly, in both Arizona and Texas, we saw once again a 0.4% increase in turnout of our treatment voters versus our control. So. Again, uh, since these weren't isolation experiments, we can't say for certain that it was the postcard alone that made this impact, but we do see that when combined with other methods, at least these postcards have the potential to be impactful. All right, friends and family messaging. This is an interesting one that we actually first experimented with back in 2021 with texts. So those of you that have been with us since then might've sent that text. So this is another one that we tried to use in 2024 when we weren't able to use that loss aversion messaging. So super simple, super eye-catching, make sure your friends and family vote. I'm gonna tell you a secret. I don't know who this person's friends and family are. I don't know whether they're already good voters. I'm not measuring that. Instead, we're using this idea of friends and family to make this person into a bit of a role model or I think what we use in our report, we say a deputized norm enforcer. We are putting this person on the inside with us. We're saying, you know it's important to be a good voter. Making that statement that this person is like us, they think it's important to be a good voter. Make sure your friends and family are good voters too. Now, this example reminds me of like, you know, I may or may not jaywalk if there's no cars coming by. But if I see that there's a little kid waiting with their parent and the kid's trying to cross the street, I am not going to be a bad example and jaywalk in front of this little kid, right? So this is a similar idea. Even if this person wasn't planning to vote, now that we're saying it's your responsibility to make sure other people that you care about vote, it actually is likely to increase their chances, or that was our theory, that it would increase their chances of voting as well in order to be that good example for other people. So we did a standalone experiment um, in the North Carolina presidential primary. We had the suggestion of an impact there, but that was not statistically significant. But in our multi-mode campaign in Nevada, we did see a 0.3% increase in turnout in a campaign that included these postcards. So we don't really have enough evidence here. We haven't tested this enough to be able to say with certainty that these postcards um, create an impact but it might be something worth exploring again in the future. So many of you have postcarded with us. You've already donated your time and many of you have donated your resources as well. I'll tell you, it's important to us that our postcarding program be accessible, even to people who cannot afford to provide their own stamps uh, or make a donation to cover the costs. That is very important to us. Many organizations require volunteers to provide that. We don't but we need your support in order to continue this very successful program. It is expensive, even with the donations from many volunteers. So we really invite you to make a donation and help support this impactful program.